The time has come. The Fed has signaled that it is going to start making rate cuts and the market has responded. The market absolutely loved that today. We're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the 10 to 2 year US Treasury inversion. We're going to talk about TMF. Yes, the bonds. We're going to talk about the bonds because just like Jay Powell said earlier today, the time has come. The time is now, okay, he didn't say that last part. I'm saying that last part, but we're gonna take a look at those because the time is now. I did sell some of those today because I was up nicely. I may look at re-entering them here because on Monday because there's some pretty interesting movements happening on it on a time frame that I like and I'm seeing potentially more upside. So I took some profits off the table. I may re-enter them next week. We can take a look at that micro strategy on an absolute tear today. Crypto backed everything based anything is absolutely flying today. We're going to take a little bit of a look at those as well. Specifically, I want to talk about Iron. Iron's doing pretty nice, doing something pretty interesting. I like it. I'm being very happy about that. I'm also pretty happy about what Mara and CleanSpark did today as well. I'm not going to cover every single miner today, but I'm going to cover a couple of them. And tomorrow on the weekly closes, I will cover all of our favorites, uh, but we won't get all of them today. I don't have the time to do it right now. Before we get going, smash that like button. Subscribe if you've been with us a while and haven't done so yet. And check out the Trade Cave store. Link in the description as well as the channel bio. Let's get right into the rates. So we're going to look at the 10-year, 2-year inversion. You can see we've been inverted since July 7th, 2022. And even today, even with the hint, you know, usually rates drop when Jay Powell's talking at Jackson Hole. Even with that, we didn't get any um, any re um, uninversion out of it. And you see, we came close to uninversion once on uh, what day is that August 2nd but it didn't happen so we are still inverted so the party is still on we usually usually don't get a recession until this uninverts and even then it's going to be a little while before the recession really hits now do we think it's going to happen personally I do think it will eventually happen I do think it's going to take longer than we think in order for it to happen just like inflation took longer than we thought to decrease and the Fed held rates higher longer than we thought that they would. So I do think that that's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to happen until maybe late 2025, early 2026 at this point. Right now, we have the party on from the Fed saying that they're going to cut rates. We've got corporate America doing buybacks all the way until the first week of September. So we've got a couple more weeks of corporate buybacks coming through, bringing pressure, upward pressure, buying pressure on our favorite stocks, uh, the big boys anyways. And we also have a presidential uh, election cycle, which generally leads to more liquidity in the market and no recession. So I don't think we're going to see that this year. I don't think we're going to see that early next year because all that money will still be flowing through the economy for a little while. I do think the back end of 2025 or the beginning of 2026, like, you know, February, March area, I think we're going to start feeling that pain from the uninversion when this does happen later this year. So keep your eyes open for that. Watch out for it. Also, when the Fed cuts rates, do not be surprised if we see a drop in markets for like a week or two and then a swift recovery out of those cuts. So they could, we could often see a drop and then a rally out of the Fed rate cuts. So if it, there's a drop like the first the first week after the rate cuts, don't start pulling your hair out, freaking out that everything isn't working. No, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is confuse you as a retail investor and take your money. That's it's exactly what it's supposed to do. And it's exactly what is likely going to happen. Or, uh, you know, and if it just launches, we'll be ready for that too. All right. So let's move on to TMF. So TMF, this is what I'm interested in here. So today I made about 200 bucks on this move. I had a couple of call options on TMF that I've been holding uh, since not that day that I've been holding since like, yeah, no, I held through this. Yeah. That I've been holding since like August 22nd, I believe is when I got them. And I went through a bit of a downturn and I was down like $200 on it. Uh, just yesterday. And then today with this rally up, uh, I'm actually uh, positive on that. So I took the, I took my profits, locked those in and I am looking at, this is what I'm looking at. All right. Monday for Monday, this right here, let me get my drawing this right here. I'm looking at that as a bull flag. I'm looking at that as a bull flag, because if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you will see that the MACD is giving us on this two hour time frame is giving us a cross up. RSI is not overbought yet. So we have room to the upside. If we conquer this yellow line, which it looks like we're just barely doing. So it's at $59 and five cents. If we hold that, if we open above that Monday morning, I'm looking for a move on this up to at least 59.51 more and possibly even all the way up to $60 on Monday, which would be a pretty nice move out of 
TMF. Now, TMF likes to do a lot of its moves in the pre-market. So I might want to get, see, you notice, like it does a lot of down and up in the pre-market. <laughs> so I might need to wake up super duper early Monday and buy just regular shares of this thing and ride it up a dollar or two and see how that goes. Because the options, I should have held on to those options. But you know what? I locked in the profit. I'm not, I'm not mad about that. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Let's take a look at MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy is not even, not even stopping. All right. It went up today. 12%. It started the day at 137. It went up to 150 where it closed. In the post market, it is coming down to 149 a little bit. I like to see it come a little bit lower, but this was a bull flag. This was a bull flag, okay? That is a confirmed bull flag. Now, is it a fake out breakout potentially? Maybe, I don't know. We'll see on Monday what happens on Monday. I'll stop jumping around. So if it holds above 147.09 on Monday, right? Holds above that. We are opening up to 170 on micro strategy and I will jump back in at a higher strike price. Yes, I sold my or I closed by I bought to close my cash secured put on micro strategy today for I think it was 60 something percent gain, something like that. I saw well, I opened one up last, you know, just a few days ago. Right. And within a couple of days, I saw 60 percent gain. So I locked it in. I should not have done that. I would have gotten 100% today had I held through the afternoon. I did not do that, so I got a little, oh, I got close to 60. It was like 55 or something. It was close enough to 60 for me to say, it's been just a couple of days. I should probably lock this in. And then it proceeded to rally up another $6, making me look like an idiot, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. I am looking for another entry, and I will enter above 150 if this bull flag here if it holds and we can stay above honestly as long as it stays above 140 like especially if it came back to 140 i'd be pretty happy about that move but i am looking forward to move up to 170 pretty quickly let's take a look at the receipts real quick okay so these are my receipts Boop. so we've been working on this since august 9th it's august 23rd now so we've been working on this for a solid 14 days it has been two weeks these are the receipts here. You can see them all. You can pause the screen. You can add it up, subtract it, whatever you want to do right here. This was my closure today. So I opened up two days ago for $449. I closed today for $241 to lock in a little over $200 gain on that in two days. That's why I did that. That was a pretty solid up jump. I wanted to lock it in thinking that we might see a bit of a curl down after Jerome Powell spoke. I thought there might be like an hour or two of weakness. I only got about 30 minutes of weakness and I missed another entry. There was an entry that it came to that I wanted to get, but I had to do something for work. So my, you know, my day job. So I wasn't able to get into that entry. So I did miss that as it came down a little bit for about 30 minutes and then it launched. Like it came to where I wanted to re-enter and then it launched without me even being able to do anything about it. So now I'm stuck waiting and that's okay. So for now, in two weeks, I have made $851 on micro strategy selling cash secured puts. That is $425 a week. So we are sticking to the plan. We're doing well here. Hopefully micro strategy doesn't get away with us and we can make enough money to keep going on this one. All right. The other thing that you probably want to know about is Nvidia. So this is going on with Nvidia. So I am now uh, in another Nvidia put. I sold it. Um, yesterday i sold this one yesterday so i rolled this yesterday i i made one dollar on my uh six hundred dollar put for 118 dollars on 920 exploration 920 uh, i made one dollar on it because it looked like it was going to come down a little bit further and it did so i went and sold it for uh, another one for uh 690 dollars yesterday so i ended up making a 90 dollar move on that and then today it was up this much right now. I have not closed this. This is still open. I'm going to keep this open until probably Tuesday, unless on Monday, this is up 60% or more Then I'll get rid of it on Monday, but I'm planning to hold till Tuesday because earnings is on Wednesday and I want out before Wednesday. Okay. I want out before earnings and that's what's going on with the Nvidia and the micro strategy cash secured, put the wheel, my wheel this is going on with the wheel. Okay. Uh, so that's it for those things. Let's take a look at Iren. Big fun fact about Iren. I'm positive on my Iren right now. I am actually up on Iren. I think it's like 7%. I've got about 500 shares right now. Yeah, I got in at 500 shares. I'm up 6.81% on this so far. So I'm feeling pretty good. I've been buying since 10 and I bought all the way down through six. All right, so Iren. I like where Iren is right now. Okay, this is what I like about Iren. Two things. Okay, two things. 
cross up on the MACD about three days ago, right? Three, yeah, about three, four days ago. We got a cross up on the MACD. The RSI isn't overbought yet, so it has room up. Okay, our only our only obstacle right here, and we got a bull flag right here. We got a bull flag right there. Okay, our only obstacle is that yellow ATR band. The yellow ATR band, which is currently sitting at 864. We get above 864, we are opened up to $10.58. Okay, over 864, we're opened up to 1058. Below 864, we may retest the bottom here, which is eight, was it 34 something? No, no, $8. We may retest the bottom of the flag at $8. If we lose the bottom of the flag at $8, we will return probably to about $7.50. I will buy more at $7.50. We are currently in an upward ascending channel. If you've been watching us for a while, you know that ascending channels often break to the downside. They do often do that but we have not broken out of this ascending channel yet. We came to the bottom, so we went up, we went sideways, pull back through time as I like to call it. We hit the bottom of the uh, ascending channel and we have bounced, right? Bouncing there is great. All we gotta do is conquer this little line right here, 864, just a couple of pennies. We just gotta get a couple of pennies higher and we will be unlocking a room all the way to the top of this ascending channel, which is up here at $10 which is pretty easy to reach, right? I mean, honestly, it's up to 1058, but the ascending channel, like we might hit 10 and find that 10 is a level of resistance, even though the top of the ATR bands is at 1058. And if we can get outside of those ATR bands, which Iron is known to do, if we can get outside of those, we have room all the way up to like 13, $14. And at that point, I'm at 100% on my Iron almost. My, my, my average cost for Iron is $8.07. cents. So if we can hit $16.14, which is boop, underneath, which is within this marine, maroon color here, we've almost gotten there, to, right? We, we've almost gotten there. That would be 100% for me, and which is basically just getting to the previous highs from before, which I am very confident we will do sometime in October or November. Uh, so just a couple of months from here, I'll be pulling out 100% from IREN and rolling that into, I don't know what, we'll see at the time when the time comes. So IREN is doing very well for me right now. I'm very happy with IREN. Uh, it is showing a bull flag. I like that. It just needs to conquer that yellow line and it will look great. Mara did something interesting today as well. Mara is breaking out. This is a breakout, okay? If you're in Mara, you're very happy today. So three days ago, you got the MACD cross. We are not overbought on the RSI yet either here. We're seeing some nice volume coming out of this as well. We are above the mid ATR band on Mara. Mara is open to $20 now, okay? Mara can run to $20, easy. As long as nothing gets in its way, Mara can run up to $20, all right? That is awesome. My calls will enjoy that because they've been really hating this sell off, all right? Anyways, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I've got like three of these, three calls for uh, December. I'm looking for Mara to hit hit 20. Uh, I'm looking for Mara to conquer that 20 and move it. Let's go to the weekly. Let's, let's look at the weekly uh, on this on this bad boy. Uh, not the two day. I want the weekly. Well, you know what? Two days cool too. No, I want the weekly. I said I want the weekly and I want the weekly. All right, the weekly on this bad boy. This is what I'd be looking for for sometime around, you know, 60 to 90 days from now, right? $29. So we came to the bottom of this channel. Let me, let me delete some of these lines so we can actually see this stuff a little nicer. I'm leaving 1980. Uh, I want to leave that line too. I want to leave all these lines, guys. I want to leave these lines. Uh, on the weekly, we conquered the 20, the 200 week moving average there. We're above it. Well, yeah, we're above it. It's at 1847. Price is currently at 1864. We're above that. We open above that next week. We're going to have a really good time on Mara. All right. Uh, I know I'm doing the weekly Mara right now. I'll do it again tomorrow. Don't worry. Uh, we got a white bar on the MACD for the weekly. That's awesome. We are inside of this. Ascent. You see the big ascending channel here? Let me turn off my fib cloud. The big ascending channel. Let me turn off my fib cloud. The big ascending channel. We came to the bottom of it, right? We came outside of it a little bit. We almost confirmed it in it out of it, but we came back inside of it. Now we have room all the way up to the top of this bad boy again. And you, you know, the last two times we came to the top of this thing, we went outside of it. So the top of this thing and the shortest time frame, the top of this thing is at $30.50. 30 to $30.80 basically $30.80. Now we've come out of this thing by a, a lot before. Like, I mean, we could go as high as 35 easily, easily. If we're looking in like November, 
the top of the channel is at 3241. And if we go outside of it, we could easily hit 36. We could easily hit $40 on Mara. So I'm very happy with this move on Mara. This is feeling very, very nice. I love the way that this is playing out for Mara. Right now, Mara is great. Okay, I like the way it looks. And of course, none of this is financial advice or a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. It is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Let's look at Clean Spark real quick. This is going to be the last one I look at today. I know we, we want to talk about all of them all the time. Me too. But I'm going to save it for tomorrow. I don't have a lot of time right now. I got to get this done before my lunch period is over. So <laughs> on uh, Clean Spark, we are actually doing okay today. We're up 6.23%. We are coming to the top of this little, this little island right here. If we get a gap up, if we could get a gap up on Monday that takes us anywhere into this gap and above and we don't look back, this ends up being an island reversal. That would be fantastic for CleanSpark if we can get that gap up on Monday. Okay, we are. Now, there is some buildup for this. I mean, we are up in the post right now. We're up one cent in the post. I know it's not huge, but we're up. The center of this descending channel here that we're in, we are above that. We're above that center line, which means we're open to the upper portion of it, which could take us back up to 15, almost $16 very quickly. Okay. So that's pretty exciting. I'm very excited about that. I like that a lot. I like the way the chart looks right now. I'm pretty happy about it. As long as we don't get screwed over by some kind of thing, we're going to be fine. Now, what's in the way of us right now? So what's in the way of us getting there? 1328 is the mid ATR band. That's in the way. The 200 day moving average is that pink line. That's a 1467. That's actually kind of where we want to go. I'm expecting us to maybe create a bit of a flag. So we're gonna, I'm expecting us to maybe gap up to here, right? Hit that, maybe come down a little bit on Monday, hopefully not close the gap. And then late Monday or Tuesday, find ourselves up back at the 200 day moving average somewhere around the high 14s, maybe low 15s. That is my hope for next week for CleanSpark. That's what I'm looking for. That is, of course, invalidated if we find ourselves anywhere, you know, anywhere under 1244 on Monday. OK, that's what's going on. But the MACD is in the right place. We are now bullish on the RSI for CleanSpark. Everything looks good as long as Bitcoin holds up. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. This is gonna be the last thing we do today. Bitcoin. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. How are you looking today, Bitcoin? Bitcoin is looking fantastic. Wow, Bitcoin's looking good. Bitcoin's looking real good. All right, so we did this thing where we came down in this channel, right? And then we came up in this channel and it frustrated. It didn't do a down move. It didn't make a double top there, right? What it did was it did a breakout. That's a breakout candle that we saw today. I know there's a lot of scribbles, so let me get rid of some of them. We got a breakout candle today on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is above the 200 day moving average now. It is at 63,642. JPAL came out with the goods today and delivered it. And the Bitcoin ate it up and gave us a move up. So this was in fact ended up being, if we go to a larger time frame, that ended up being a bull flag. Congratulations, everyone. You held through some pretty tough price action here since August 8th, uh, honestly, August 5th, <laughs> since then. And we are being rewarded for that. So we are now open. We are open all the way up to 66,369 on the daily time frame, which would take us, if we get there, we get slightly above the neckline for the double top that happened back here in July. We get above that. Let's, let's look at, let's look at, a, let's look at like a three day or something, right? Let's look at a three day. Give us a shorter term. Yeah. We get above that. We are opened up to $70,000. And if we get to the top of the three day ATR bands, we are knocking on the door of all time highs for Bitcoin. And if you look at that MACD on the three day, we're about to do a cross up. We get one more good day on Bitcoin. We get a cross up on the three day for the, we get a cross up on the MACD for the three day here for Bitcoin. And that is fan fantastic. That'd be great. And if we could finally, finally start making a brand new all-time high, I think we're going to see something amazing out of Bitcoin. And that is all that I've got for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video if you found it fun or informative. Check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio and have a profitable day.